Okay, I'm going to do some more uh, uh, just Newtonian mechanics for derivations. And uh, this is just the basic kinematic and one-dimension equations, which is all the two-dimensional, three-dimensional equations are all really the same thing with just with, you know, an X, or a Y, and a Z component, which seems to make things more complicated. But it's, if you think of it, it's really the same thing. If you learn what the equations mean and how they flow, the add and the extra components will, will, will be no real difficulty. Uh, when the professor writes it on the board with all the subscripts and superscripts and everything else they'll add where they, to make it seem like it's easier, it's going to look confusing, but it's really the same as what we're going to do here. We'll start out with the second derivative of x with respect to time, and we'll call that a. So first thing we'll do is we'll take an integral of that, and we're going to get the first derivative of x with respect to time equals a t. We know that's velocity, so velocity equals at, and we'll add a constant, because when we take the derivative, that constant goes away. We have the velocity final. We'll want the velocity initial, so we'll call that constant the velocity initial. So we have v equals v plus at. So bring that over here. We'll just drop the v. Just or We'll keep it in. Now I take an integral of this. And that's really dx over dt integrated with this. So derivative of the integral of that is just going to be x equals vt plus 1 half at squared. We'll do another constant. Well, we have the position at the end, so we'll want the position at the beginning. So we'll just call that position 0, x0 zero, equals x0 zero plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. That's where those all come from. I know they show you that, and maybe everyone really gets that part, but I see a lot of professors that just show the kinematic equations and never really uh, show how they're derived. Well, let's take some of these. We'll, we'll take uh, v equals at. So some simple uh, algebra, we'll just bring that uh, a over, and so we'll get t equals v over a. And then same thing, we say we want to solve for a, we'll just bring the t over, so a equals v over t. And then and this will make sense when we plug it back in the equation. So at velocity of zero, starting at a rest, well, that will be zero. So V equals AT. And then plug in the A. So V equals V over T times T. Well, the T's cross out, and you have V equals V, obvious. Same thing, V equals AT. Let's solve for T. So V equals A times V over A. The A's cross out, V equals V. Now, every equation that you, you think you have to memorize, uh, all it all comes from things like this. This is a bit more intuitive than maybe the other one I did or when you get into uh, conservation of energy. But they all stem from this, and they all essentially stem from F equals MA, which we showed in the other video. And uh, why professors don't show it that simple, I don't know, but it's always frustrating to me that every, they, everything's presented as kind of a unique and novel idea when they're all interrelated. And when you know that, you won't, the equations won't seem mysterious, and you won't have to question them, you'll know how they all flow together, and that'll make the problem solving easier.